All right, we're going to be going over some of the terms on the spinal cord here. Uh, here in the anterior side of your spinal cord. Um, so this is representing the spinal cord going through there. You're looking down on it. So this here is going to be the anterior fissure. On the posterior side, we're going to have the posterior sulcus. Not nearly as deep as that anterior fissure. Then, going over a couple more terms on this model. Um, down here on the spinal cord, your gray matter sits on the inside. And your white matter, white matter sits on the outside. So that's opposite to the brain. Coming out here, we see your nerves coming out. This big bulge right here, this is going to be your identifier. This is going to be the dorsal root ganglion. Dorsal root ganglion. Okay, then we're going to have your dorsal root right here, this is this section. And your ventral root will be this section right here. So this is your ventral root. Okay, jumping over to this model quick, just so I can show you a few more terms. If we take this piece off, down at the bottom, the spine there, here we have what's called your cauda equina. It literally means horse's tail. You can see why they call it that, because there's all these little branches coming off there. So that's why they call it cauda equina. Right above the cauda equina, we have this bulge. It's called the conus medullaris. It might be kind of hard to see on the video, but it's just a bulge right before that cauda equina. It's called the conus medullaris. And then the last term is this phylum terminale. And that's just a little nerve poking out the end there. If I put this on, you can see how that phylum terminale is the only one that sticks out there. All right, here we got a rough drawing of that spinal cord. So I'm gonna highly recommend that you look in your book to get a better picture of this. But here we can see that gray matter, your white matter, and here's that dorsal root, ventral root, dorsal root ganglion. The big reason we drew this on there is to show you these uh, gramma communicantes. So here's your dorsal ramus. That's going to your back. So it's gonna provide innervation to the muscles of your back and also uh, bring in sensory from the skin back there. The ventral ramus is going to provide innervation to the skin and muscles on the ventral side of your body, so on the front of your body. And then this rami communicantes here, this is going to provide innervation to some of your visceral organs in your gut, so like your stomach and your intestines and such. Now we'll take a look at the dural reflections. If I combine this model with this brain, it'll make it a lot simpler. Putting these two together, you can see this structure here will be the falx cerebri. That's going in between the two hemispheres of the cerebrum. The next structure will be the falx cerebelli. It's not shown on this model, but it would be sitting between the two hemispheres of the cerebellum just as the falx cerebri sits between the two hemispheres of the cerebrum. Our next structure would be the tentorum cerebelli, and that's just going to be a covering over the cerebellum. If I rotate to this side, you can see between uh, it'll be sitting right between the cerebrum on top and the cerebellum on bottom. The last structure would be the diaphragm cellae, and that'll be found in this region here. And that is just going to be around the pituitary gland. Um, refer to your textbook. Don't uh, trust that this is a complete and best picture. Okay, we're going to go over some of the sinuses here in the brain. So right here, you can see your superior sagittal sinus. Below that, you can see your inferior sagittal sinus, being these blue lines there. And then, the next one we have is we're going to take this piece out, and we can see coming around the outside of that tentorum cerebelli is going to be your transverse sinus. 
I'm going to set this down. And then this also shows it right here. Transverse sinus. So I'm going around the rim there. And then I'm going to pick this guy back up. Your straight sinus is going to be running right here. So like right where the pointer is running. Right along there. So your straight sinus comes straight out from comes straight out from here. Okay. Next we're gonna have the confluence of sinuses. That's right here. That's where the transverse and the straight come together there. Okay. Next we're gonna have your sigmoid sinus. Now this one's kinda tricky. Try to get a good view in there for you. It's gonna be right there. It's gonna run between the transverse sinus here and the jugular here. So it's just this part right here. Okay. Then we're gonna move over to this other model. Go over some more of the sinuses. So if I take this piece out, here we can see just some of the inner parts of the brain. So if I take this piece off, this is your corpus callosum here, just to get you oriented. Now what these clear pieces are signifying is those are sinuses, so that's going to be open space in the brain where the CSF is going to flow. Okay, so here are these two big pieces. These are going to be your first and second ventricles. They're interchangeable, which one is which. Okay, it's these big pieces. So I take these off. Then we have this piece right here. We can see these, uh, this blue here on this piece. This is going to be the choroid plexus. And there's a couple of different places that the choroid plexus is. It's not only here, but that's where the CSF fluid gets made. Okay. So then, if I take that off and divide this guy in half, can see here, remember this clear is just space is what it's representing, is what all this clear is. So we're going to see right here, your interventricular foramen, and that's where the first and second, uh, the first and second ventricles are going to connect to the, your third ventricle, which is this space in here. Okay, so that's interventricular foramen, connecting the first and second ventricles to the third ventricle. Then, we have your mesencephalic aqueduct right here. And that's going to connect your third ventricle to your fourth ventricle. Here's your fourth ventricle. Okay. Now this is kind of a tricky model. It's hard to show in the video, so you're going to need to spend some time in the lab getting used to it. But if we go over here, we can see some more of your sinuses represented by the blue. We already went over a bunch of these, but here, this one coming around the top, just as we had before, it's representing your superior sagittal sinus. Coming around the side here is your transverse sinus. Okay. And then right here, you can see that sigmoid sinus running between the transverse sinus and your jugular foramen. So here's your sigmoid sinus. And here too, you can see just a piece of that sigmoid sinus. You can kind of see the S shape of it right here. Okay, and so again, just make sure you spend some time in the lab checking out this model. We'll be going over your telencephalon or your cerebrum here. Um, we have two cerebral hem hemispheres. So this whole thing is going to be your left hemisphere. This is this would be your right, so left and right cerebral hemispheres. So I'm going over some of the structures here. Here we can see your corpus callosum. Just kind of remember it looks like a big C. So corpus callosum. Then we have septum pellucidum. It sits right there. The septum pellucidum divides the two lateral ventricles. So there's going to be a lateral ventricle sitting like right in this space and sitting in the space right behind that lateral ventricle 
or right behind that sept septum pellucidum. So there's lateral ventricle on this side, and also um, deep behind that. Okay. Then we're gonna have the lateral ventricles, which you can't see. Um, you can see those in one of the different videos. It's just space. Uh, going over some of the other structures. Cortex is just going to be the outside of the brain. Okay. Your gyri are going to be the elevations. And your sulci are going to be the crevices. Okay. So one more time. Gyri are the elevations. Sulci are the crevices. Okay. And then you'll need to know gray and white matter of the brain. This really isn't the best place to see it. Just know that white matter is on the inside in the brain and gray matter is on the outside, uh, just opposite of your spinal cord. So gray matter is on the outside, white matter is on the inside. Okay. So then a couple other fissures we need to know. You need to know your longitudinal fissure. So if I take my left hemisphere here, longitudinal fissure is this one right down the middle there between the two hemispheres. Okay. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Kind of hard to hold this guy, but just right down the middle, dividing the two hemispheres is your longitudinal fissure. All right, now we're going to take a look at your transverse fissure. So your transverse fissure is this space right here in between your temporal lobe and your occipital lobe and then your cerebellum. So right there, this space is your transverse fissure. Okay. Then uh, for the lobes of the brain, you're going to have a frontal lobe, you have a parietal lobe right on top, occipital lobe in the back, and then a temporal lobe right here. For the most part, you just kind of need to know the regions for this class, but uh, one thing that you do need to know is that this right here is the lateral sulci. It's a special one, so you need to know that lateral sulci. And that lateral sulci divides the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe. Okay, and then if we flip this over, take a look at the bottom there. Again, we can see your olfactory tract leading up to that olfactory bulb. So first we have the diencephalon for the vesicle. Um, the first term in your manual is the epithalamus. However, it's best to orient yourself looking at the thalamus first. This right here is the thalamus. Um, the region right above that thalamus in here is going to be the epithalamus. Um, next term we have here is the pineal gland. This right here, this tip here is the pineal gland. You cannot see the habenula on the model. Next term is the fornix. This all right here is the fornix. And like I said previously, thalamus right here. Right below the thalamus is going to be your hypothalamus. That region right there is the hypothalamus. The interventricular foramen is going to be right here, and in your CSF flow, remember your lateral ventricles are up here, the CSF flows through that interventricular foramen into this space, the space of that third ventricle. Next term you need to know is the interthalamic adhesion, inter between in the thalamus area. So this is the interthalamic adhesion right here, and then the anterior and posterior commissures anterior commissure right here, trace across, go back to this posterior commissure. After that we have the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland would sit down in here, you cannot see it on this model. This right here is the infundibulum. The infundibulum is the stock that holds the pituitary gland. So the infundibulum holds the pituitary gland that would sit right in here. And you can see it on the other brain model. After that we have, this is the optic chiasm. Optic chiasm. And lastly, the mammary bodies. Mammillary bodies. The next vesicle here is the mesencephalon. First term you need to know is the capora quadrigemina. Right here. That's going to be broken up into two components. Put this together so you can see it in a different view. We have the superior colliculi, which is for sight, and the inferior colliculi, 
which is for sound. And then the last term you need to know here is going to be the mesencephalic aqueduct, also known as the aqueduct of the midbrain. Alright, so the next region of the brain we're going to go over is called the metencephalon. The first structure on your list that you have to know is called your pons, which is this structure right here, this round structure. And it's on both halves because it's this is only half the brain, but just remember that it's on both halves, so that's right here on the brain stem. The next one is called your cerebellum, and that's this brown part down here. If I rotate this a little bit, you can see it from the back, it's brown. And the actual meaning of cerebellum means little brain, so it literally looks like a little brain. The next structure, which you have to have both hemispheres of the cerebellum, is called your vermis. And if you put these together, if you see that ridge going down the middle, it's going to be tough to point to, but it's right in the middle there, that is called your vermis. Don't confuse that with your falx cerebelli, because your falx cerebelli is just a reflection, and this is actually a structure. The next one is your cortex, or just the outside of the cerebellum, and that's going to be on the outside, so just the whole thing. And then the folds are called the folia, so you can see those little folds on the cerebellum. Those are called folia. The next is called the uh, arbor vitae, and that is this white material in here, and that's actually myelinated axons. And that's also known as the tree of life. The next is called your mesencephalic aqueduct, which is going to be right here. And as in the mes mesencephalon, it's also in there. So this is a good place to distinguish between your mes and metencephalon right here. And the last one you have to know is called your cerebellar peduncle. And if I can get this situated nicely. This is your cerebellar peduncle right here. And if I set this down, it is right here again and is connecting to the pons area right here. The next region of the brain is going to be called your myelencephalon. And this myelencephalon, the first structure you have to know is called your medulla oblongata, which is this structure right down here. And that is where your white and your gray matter are going to switch from your brain. The gray matter is going to be on the outside and the white is going to be on the inside and it goes to the spinal cord. It's going to be the opposite. So medulla oblongata right there. The next structure or space you have to know is called the fourth ventricle, which is going to be this space right here for CSF. And this is another good region to distinguish because your fourth ventricle is in your metencephalon and in your myelencephalon so if you distinguish right here you know that that's where they separate and then the last structure you have to know of the myelencephalon is called the central canal and that's going to go down into your spinal cord right there